So in the activity, we asked you a number of questions. The first question was whether it was more likely that a word in the English language would start with the letter R or have the letter R in the third position. Now I'm guessing that most of you would guess that it was more likely that R would be in the first position. In fact, there are 2,386 words with R in the first position, and here they are. But there are even more with it in the third position, 4,247 to be precise. So nearly twice as many words have R in the third position. Why would somebody estimate that there are more words with R in the first position? Well, how did you try and estimate the number of words with R in each position? You probably tried to think of examples of each type of word, and it's easier to think of words based on what letter they start with compared to what letter is in the third position. The next question that we asked you was what is more likely to kill someone? A smoking related illness or a car accident? Now, when we say someone here, we don't mean you in particular. We're talking about the number of deaths in the community as a whole. So ignore for a moment whether you personally smoke or drive a car or motorbike. Most people tend to guess that a car accident is more likely to kill someone. However, when you look at the number of deaths by different causes, deaths by smoking related illness are up to 10 times more likely to occur. When you look at deaths around the world, the same general picture emerges. It's a bit trickier to see though, because causes of death are recorded differently. But you can see with this World Health Organization data that the diseases that are often associated with smoking, such as heart disease, stroke and lung related disease, and cancer are all more frequent than car related deaths. So why do people overestimate the threat posed by car accidents? Well, think about which of the following two news stories are more likely to be seen either online or in a newspaper. Is it the one about the terrible car accident or the one about the lung cancer victims? It's much more likely that you'll read about road accidents, especially around the time of public holidays when the road toll often becomes a focus of the national media. Because you're exposed to more stories about car accidents, it's easier to recall examples of road accidents that cause death. And so we overestimate the risk to life posed by car crashes. The next question asked what animal kills the most people per year? The options that we gave you were shark, wolf, lion, elephant, hippopotamus, crocodile, tapeworm, roundworm, freshwater snail, assassin bug, tsetse fly, dog, snake, human or mosquito. I'm not going to guess exactly which one most people selected, but I will guess that it was not mosquito. Or perhaps if I can weasel out of that prediction a little, I'll guess that there were several similarly popular choices that don't reflect the actual differences in the number of deaths. So let's take a look. For sharks and wolves, they only killed 10 people. For lions and elephants, they only killed 100 people each. The hippopotamus accounted for 500 deaths, the crocodile 1,000, and the tapeworm twice as many as that. The roundworm killed 2,500 people, and the freshwater snail took care of 10,000 people, as did the assassin bug and the tsetse fly. Dogs killed 25,000 people, and snakes 50,000 people. Which brings us to humans, who were very busy killing 475,000 people but not as busy as mosquitoes, who took the lead with 725,000 deaths. Hmm. So why do people not always see mosquitoes as being the biggest threat out of all of these animals? Well, the explanation is actually the same as for the car accident example. We tend to read more news stories about deaths by large animals, such as crocodiles and sharks, perhaps because these deaths happen in popular holiday destinations. Also, top-level predators seem to create a high level of fear in humans and so attract a lot of media interest. This could explain certain films such as Jaws, the Sharknado series and Crocodile Dundee. There are not many movies about mosquitoes attacking people while on holiday or people who hunt mosquitoes. The final question was about deaths in Australia per year to a number of natural disasters and sharks. Most people think that Australia is a pretty deadly place and that everything is out to kill you. But let's see how accurate you are in estimating the risks posed by these things. The data that this graph represents was collected by Dr. Rob Brander and his colleagues from the University of New South Wales. And it shows the average number of deaths per year in Australia due to each cause since 1852. Well, it might surprise you to learn that sharks kill only one person on average per year in Australia. 
Floods account for 4.3 deaths, bushfires 5.9 deaths and cyclones 7.5 deaths per year. Ocean rips actually account for the most deaths, an average of 21 per year. Did you guess correctly? Possibly not because some of the other natural disasters such as floods, cyclones and bushfires get more media attention because they often affect large parts of the country and large numbers of people at once. And they happen over several days or weeks. Ocean rips on the other hand are always present and generally only affect a small number of people at any one time in any one location. So they don't get as much media coverage. So that's the availability heuristic and how we estimate the likelihood of an event's occurrence based on how easily we can think of examples of that event.